Hi friends, this is Sarah with Quantum Healing with the Angels. I have a new podcast for you today. It's episode 27. I want to thank you for being part of our podcast community. Your support and your encouragement and everything. It inspires us every day and we're grateful for everyone who listens. Right now we are, we just went through a really weird thing in our other business. And so suddenly we have extremely limited income and I don't know why it's happening. It feels like we just try to keep this going and something's trying to keep us from keeping it going. That's what it feels like. There will be exclusive content from this podcast, which is really, really good and definitely worth $5. Um, It's about some of the grand castles in the world and how they were created. It is very, very interesting information that I've never heard anyone any psychic, any channel, anywhere, explain this kind, this information. So, I hope you support us in purchasing that if you are able to. There are some new things up in our shop. The next things I think to go up will be a sleep meditation. I know a lot of people are having a hard time sleeping. I'll also be doing a guided meditation that is like a quantum healing session, but one that you can do at home. There are some other things that I am so, so passionate about. I named these Alara's Imaginarium. Well, that's the name of the shop. (laughs) That's in my mind. It's because Alara is the name of my higher self and she's the one giving me these ideas. And just to make it easy for you, I will make sure that all links to everything that we're offering will be at the top of the show notes. Any, well, if you can just send light and love our way so that we can get out of this situation and do more things for you we would appreciate that too and I think I mentioned this also if you would go to YouTube and subscribe there like any of our videos comment that would help us so much I think I asked that last time and Only one person is a new subscriber on YouTube, so that, that, I'm not going to lie, that bummed me out. (laughs) It did. Because that's something that's free, and we could really use that help. So, um, I know we're, I know we all have problems, um, we just want to keep bringing this to you. Okay, here we go with episode 27 of Quantum Healing with the Angels. Do you mind turning that back on? Oh, sure. Oh. For good? Yes, that is fine. That is good. We love that. You like that? Okay. Is that too loud? Too you can turn it down just enough. Yeah, it's right there. This is Uriel. You've been talked about lately. Hmm. <laughs> and lots of friends talking about you. Yeah. We talk to them all. Yeah. They do not know that most of the time, but we do. We talk to everyone. Yeah. 
all the time. Yeah. It's not just your higher conscience talking to you, it is all of us. What can we do for you today? Well, the first thing I wanted to ask you about is there is a feeling that I have when I listen to a girl who channels, I think it is the Arcturians and the Ple Pleiadians, maybe. It's funny even talking about this thing that happened that it feels like that channeling is taking over my <laughs> my vocal cords or my tongue or something again. But anyway, it brings a feeling that I have never had before. It's like a, it's a good feeling, but, and then I start crying and it's, I don't know what's happening. Oh, you get that from your Lyrian. Uh -huh. You were friends with the Arturians. So it's almost like you listening to your best friend talking. So therefore, it's almost listening to your best friend talking. So that's why you are so connected to it. And the tone of the voice brings you lots of feelings, and you feel like you know that person, which you do know that person. It is an Octarian that you are friends with in a life. So that is why you are connected to it. Is that just one person? It's that, or is she channeling lots of people? There are a few, but there's mainly one that you are connected with because it is somewhat like listening to your best friend talk about the good old days. <laughs> like, you always talk about, you already know most of those things, but when you hear it, it's like listening to your best friend talk to someone about those things. So you have a connection to it. Yes, it is like listening to your best friend talk about the good old days. You already know what she is talking about. So that is why it resonates with you so well. Well, no, I guess I understand what people say when they, they look at the stars and have a feeling of missing their what they feel like is their home. Yes. Even though the, our home is really in the light. Yes. That is because you all came from the stars. Everyone on this planet came from the stars. What do you mean? Like, created by, from the stars? Or what do you mean? Yes, the main people that were brought to this planet were from the stars. Everyone was born here in a certain time. The original beings, there were no one on this planet. They were brought here. From other stars? Yes. Okay. So does that, is that in our DNA or something? Yes. Yeah. And the DNA changes over time because it was tampered with. But the original beings were brought here. So we have those memories stored, sort of? Yes. Okay. I know there are people that have those feelings, you know. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> I know I have a strong Lyrian. Is it Lyrian or Lyrian? It is Lyrian. You can Lyrian. see it either way, but most people would know what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And then, <clears throat> could you, um, 
Could you explain for us again? Because I think I may have lost the recording or deleted it. Why you... I know you're okay with surrogate sessions for certain situations, certain situations like, for instance, a child can't do their own session, or maybe if someone has uh, what they call autism, they may not be able to have a session, or if they're like my father, elderly, uh, they may not be in the state of mind or have the energy to have a session. But for people who are able to learn how to have a session, why do you prefer that they, that us not to do surrogate sessions? Because you talked to us about not really doing surrogate sessions. Yes, the surrogate sessions are only good for people that are mentally disabled and cannot do anything or you cannot speak to them in a manner that you can speak to a normal person because they cannot speak the way you can understand they want to say things but they cannot say it and there is no way they can go under to speak with us they can speak with us in their own way because we can hear them but they cannot translate it to you because they cannot do it it is almost like doing a surrogate session for someone that cannot speak. Of course you have to do a surrogate session for them because they cannot speak. Sure. Someone that is disabled or what you call mentally retarded cannot do it because they're on a different wavelength. Right. We can understand what they're saying, but they cannot do it the way you do it because you would not understand what they're talking about. Right. So you have to do a surrogate session. But for normal people that can do things on their own, you cannot do a surrogate session for them because they're both mostly being stubborn and they do not want to take the time to do it for themselves it is almost like they are being selfish everyone can do a session everyone can go what you call go under everyone can do it if they just relax and take the time to take it all in there is no one that is mentally stable that cannot go under for a session it is almost impossible everyone can go under in this session if they just take their time and relax and meditate and listen to whoever is practicing over them anyone can do it and I remember one of the first things you ever told us was that everyone should learn how to do quantum healing like this and I was, I was surprised at that. Why would you like everyone to learn how to do this? Because it will make everyone open-minded. Everyone is still trapped in what you call the matrix. They do not believe in these things because they are taught differently. Mm -hmm. If everyone believed in these things, then the whole planet would be pretty much peaceful. Mm -hmm. There would be no wars. No one would be fighting. Because all of those things are a waste of time and they're all negative. If everyone knew how to do these things, everyone would be peaceful. It would be a pretty comfortable living planet. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so beyond quantum healing, quantum healing hypnosis, those things are a good way to practice connecting. Yes. Yes. It will connect to everything. When you do these things, you're pretty much connected to everything at once. Because you're totally relaxed. You're not thinking about anything. You're not thinking about currency. You're not thinking about everyday survival. No one really should be thinking about surviving. But unfortunately, the way your planet is created, that is what everyone do. They pretty much think about surviving every day. And that is not the way you're supposed to be living. When you're doing these kind of things, that is the last thing on your mind. Like right now, you're not even thinking about that. 
because it is irrelevant. And that's the way everyone should be living. All of those things should be irrelevant. Unfortunately, you cannot help that because that is the way it is set up. You have to survive. You have no choice. Right. <clears throat> so that is why it is so hard for a lot of people to do these things because they are so worried about everything else that they think they have to have done. And that is why they can't concentrate on these kind of things. It almost seems like it's too good to be true for them. It's almost like they think we are living in the dream world, which you can see it that way if you want. I am here in a light. It may seem like it's a dream world to you, but it's really not. That is a normal way of living. That's the way you should be living down there, but that is not the way it is set up down there because of the matrix and all of the other things that are tied into it to make everyone upset and make them angry. Yeah. So they feel they have to survive. Right, yeah. It is a weight, but you can always take time out. If you can take time out to exercise or do something else, you can take time out to do this. Yes. Yeah. Everyone has time to do this. They think they do not, but they do. And you can get past the blocks. Oh, yes, it is very easy to get past the blocks. They think it is not, but their ego is telling them that they can't do this. It is their ego telling them that they can't do this. Well, that's the problem. When people decide, I can't do this, then that's what they've decided. Yes. So when that voice says, I, I can't do this, they have to say, Yes, I can do this. Stop telling me that. I can do this. The ego sometimes needs to be put in its place a little bit, I think. Yes. Because it can get a little out of control and tell you all kinds of things that are really not true. Because if you just tell yourself you can, and you start thinking that you can, then suddenly you can start doing all these things. Yes, the ego... Is a very bad problem for humans because the ego is always trying to protect them. Yeah, it's pretty much what it's there for. Yeah. But you can easily push the ego to the side. Because it is your ego. You can tell their ego, just get out of my way so I can do this, please. Yeah. I don't need you right now. Get out of my way. I need to see what I need to see. I do not need you telling me that what I'm seeing is not real. You tell me that money is real. You tell me all this other negative stuff is real. So why are you telling me this other stuff that is so good is not real? You can train your ego to be more positive because it is your ego. It's your ego. It is you. Just like your higher conscience is you. You can actually get your higher conscience to train your ego to be more positive. You can have a positive ego because your ego can be your friend. If you go under hypnosis, what you call it, just to see us and talk to us, you can tell your ego to believe what it is seeing. And that is how you can go under faster. So right? just tell your ego not to be so protective over you. Yeah. And it will be trained. It can be trained to be more of a positive ego. Then your ego and your higher self will be like best friends. It's almost like having double help. Because your higher self is always trying to tell your ego to shut up. It's almost like they're arguing with each other. Because your higher self is always telling you, like, okay, oh, I see that. And your ego is like, no, you didn't. And your higher self, it's like they're arguing with each other. Yes. Yeah. Not like in a negative way, but your higher self is trying to say, hey man, what are you doing? I'm trying to help here, and you're saying it doesn't exist, and it does exist. So they're kind of bickering, but it is easy to train your ego. So people need to learn how to do this for themselves, right? Yes, because most people do surrogate sessions. You know, Unfortunately, they're... they're doing it because they want proof. And that is not the way you should be doing a session. A session is not made <sighs> to make people believe in speaking with us. How can you not believe 
speaking with us in real life, but you can believe what they put in your Bible book. Oh, I believe in the angels in the Bible book, but how come you can't believe in it in real life when we're actually speaking with you through someone? That is actually a bonus when you can hear us speaking through someone and reading it in a book. <laughs> how does that even make any sense? It doesn't. I would just listen to the book. What you, you, you would listen to a book, but you won't actually listen to us in real life speaking with you? How is that even possible? I think people have been taught that they cannot do these things on their own, and that's just not true. And so, doing a surrogate session to me is like, I think you said this, like going to a psychic. Yes. Like just going to get answers, but not putting any effort into it. Yes, that's why we say we don't like those, because... They don't want to put in the work. They just want the answers without having to do any work. Right. And this is really not even work. It is very relaxing, and you can speak with us it's anytime very, you want. It's very fun. I think it's really fun. I I have a fun time doing that. Well, it's always something interesting and and beautiful that I see. And so... Yes. It brings me happiness to do these. Yes, and you see a lot because that is what the gift you're getting. You actually have learned how to channel. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Benny, uh, well, I could channel at a certain level, but now I think it's a deeper level. This is going to get even more deeper as well. Oh, that's good. When you do, when you channel, sometimes she, you, know, you will hear a different voice sometimes. It won't even sound like you. It's that Arturian sounding voice. That is what I feel sometimes. Come. Well, at first I was like, <laughs> almost like I couldn't get it out. Like it was wheezing or something in my throat. And now it's sometimes maybe because I've heard the voice. You have heard it before. It sounds like that. A little. And you channel Lyrian sometimes too. You Sometimes yeah. you get it confused with your higher self because they almost sounds the same. You have a female Lyrian that you channel sometimes. Oh. It almost sounds exactly like your higher self. But it doesn't matter because they're both saying the same thing. But you will be able to tell the difference. Very soon you'll be able to tell which one is speaking. Okay. That brings me to another question. So I know people that channel, channel people, but we asked you last time, or we've asked you before about people being available to talk, and like for example, Dolores, you told us that she was getting ready to go into a new life, yet she is still working as a, like a guide for someone. Like their main guide. Oh, yes. And then I think we asked last time about talking to, oh, Sekhmet, since I had had a, last, a past life as Sekhmet, mm -hmm. and you said that she was in another life. Mm -hmm. So how do people channel those beings if they are busy doing other things? Because you are speaking to their higher selves. Their higher selves okay. are still them. So their higher selves steps in. Mm, yeah. And they still say that they are who they were. Because they are. Yes. Yeah. So you're not necessarily speaking to exactly the person you want to speak, but you're speaking to their higher self. Mm -hmm. But it is still them. Still them. Okay. That's what I figured. I just wanted to ask. Yeah, so you still get information yeah. from them, but it is from their higher selves. And even when they're in a heart when they're in a different life, sometimes they hear if someone wants to speak to Dolores Cannon, mm -hmm. she's in, in a different life now, they will speak to her, but it will be her higher self. And even though she's in another life, she could be living in another life, and she can actually hear someone trying to speak with her while she's in another life, and she might think she's going crazy, depending on what life she's in. Because she could be doing something, and what am I hearing? Someone is... Mm -hmm. talking to me, asking these weird questions. Is that 
uh, is that why I hear things sometimes? And I'm busy giving yes. explanations to people. That's what that is? Yes, because your higher self is there. Trying to talk to another person and talking through you at the same time. Someone could be trying to channel segment. And you could be in the middle of doing something and all of a sudden you... Sometimes you do it in real life. Sometimes you blurt out something like, why did I say that? Uh -huh. Because someone is probably trying to channel segment, which was you in another life, and you're telling them something is like, why did I say that while I'm in this life? Yeah, I can hear myself like saying things very fast and explaining. Yes. Like it's an urge to explain something. Yes. That means someone <laughs> is probably channeling segment and you're trying to explain it to them and you're like, why am I saying it here in this life? That's crazy. Because you're hearing two things at once. Yeah. It is very, very, as you say on your planet, cool. I just had that in my head. Yes. Go figure. I was like, that is very cool. Yes. <laughs> We are all connected. We are. Gosh. We really are all one. Gosh. Um, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. We're so much more than we think we are. Yes, everyone on your planet is connected. Even if you don't know. Yeah. They are all connected. Everyone on the planet is connected and they have no idea that they are. Um, I wanted to ask, and I don't know if you can help me with this because it's my own feelings, but I keep thinking about all these creative ideas and things to use in sessions. Ah. Uh, yeah. What? Those will work. Okay. All, all of those will work. Yeah. That is part of the thing. You're doing the path that we said. You remember a long time ago? You haven't, you don't need to do it, but... A long time ago, we did a session with you, and we said you were going to come up with brand new things that oh. were going to help people. And you are doing it. Yeah. Yes. It's happening. Yes, and those that you're thinking up, you remember how we said, oh, we, we, we just said it. Mm -hmm. It's hard for people to go under. Mm -hmm. That will help them go under. Some people need different things. Yeah. But yes. Um, well, people seem really excited about that. And that is a new way. That you are doing it. Yeah. Because you are the only one that is doing it that way. People, will they feel more empowered once they do it? Yes. And because be like, once they see it and hear what they've done, then they will feel proud about it. Okay. They will feel, they will actually trust themselves because most people don't trust themselves to be able to do this. Yeah. They'll be able to trust, they will be able to trust themselves like, oh, I can do that now. Yeah, well, I want them to be empowered to feel like, hey, I actually can do this. Mm. And that felt good. That was really pleasurable. Yes. I want to feel that again. I yes. want to do that again. Hey, maybe I even want to do that for yes. other people and help them learn how to do it because it's so much fun. Yes, when people learn how to do these kind of things in the sessions, when they bring out their what they see in their sessions, they have to realize that they are helping people. Every time someone does a session mm -hmm. and go under and tell them about their past lives or anything in their lives, their messages are helping other people on the whole planet because of your media. They have to realize when they bring out their stories, their stories are helping other people. People need to realize that. Their stories are very powerful. Their stories will help other people that are in a similar situation. Mm. Or maybe not even a similar situation, but their stories have power. Everyone's stories have power. Lots of power. And they need to realize that. Okay. So they need to do a session and go under and talk about what they see. They could have had a past life that helped other people. 
Yeah. They could have had a past life as the person that you called in your Bible book Moses, which Moses was a real person, and he really did do all of those things. He did get the Ten Commandments, but the Ten Commandments were brought to him through alien beings. It was not through us. We did not give him those commandments. They were given to other beings. Who did that? Oh, can you tell me? I coconut. Source tells me I am not to say which beings it was. Okay. <clears throat> so, oh, wow. So he really did get the... Huh. But he was taken up into a ship. Okay. Because his hair was dark before he went up in his ship. And when he came back down, his hair was white. When his hair was white, when he came back down, people saw that and they turned him into a religious figure. They almost turned Moses into a god, almost, because they saw him go up into a ship and come back down with some tablets with some commandments on them, which would basically are rules to follow. Was that supposed to be to help humanity? Yes, because humanity was in a turmoil back then. There were a lot of what you call murders, and everything was in disarray. So the alien beings gave him those rules to try to make them calm down, but of course everyone didn't follow the rules all the time. Half of them did, half of them didn't, but at least the rules were there, and and of course, the reptilians got in on it and started twisting things around. And so the rules started off good, but of course... Are the rules what they say they are in the Bible, or were they different? Some of them were changed just a little bit, but the basic ones, like thou shalt not kill and steal, uh -huh. those are the same. Okay. There were some that were added from the reptilians, of course. And yes, it was all tampered with, the but the basic God. ones are real. The basic ones are real. Yeah. But even those rules really didn't matter, Source says, because thou should not kill doesn't really matter, because when you sign a, a life mission, you're going to kill someone sometimes, because that's what they want. Right. So that rule can be omitted, basically. They just wanted people to settle down. Is that what it was? Pretty much. Yeah. And they had to give it to a human, of course, because they didn't want to scare everyone. Yeah. They didn't want alien beings to come down and tell them things. Of course, alien beings were coming down in other parts of the planet. They always talk to your Native Americans all the time because your Native Americans weren't from this planet to begin with. And they knew that. So they're always talking to them. They didn't have to give them any rules because they were good to each other, except for when it got later years when they split it up into different tribes and they started just fighting with each other over land and things like that. But that's pretty much all they were fighting over back then. It wasn't had anything to do with any kind of religion or anything. They were just land fighting. But that came later. Sure. But earlier, when the Native Americans was there way before Yeshua was born, it was way before. Native Americans been there for thousands of years. So they were there the aliens, what you call, were always coming down, talking to them. They didn't give them any technology because they couldn't use it anyway because they would have had to have power to make them work. And, of course, there were no, there wasn't power back then. They just showed them how to make simple things, how to make things out of wood or whatever. Yeah. Or yeah. Things like that. I have a question. I don't know if you can answer this. Do you want... Oh, Coconut wants his food. There are beautiful... And this is a total switch of uh, in the conversation, but there are beautiful homes and beautiful architecture 
in places on the planet, especially in Europe. And sometimes we wonder if the story of the building of those is really real on the timeline that they've told us. Like, you know, the, the churches and things or the abbeys that are so ornate and have these beautiful steeples that are just everything's so grand and if, if things were so uh, what's the word if people didn't even have say running water or things like that how, how would they have done that architecture way back when things were supposed to be so more primitive than they are now I suppose Okay, I'm coming, Coconut. <laughs> very, this is going to be very important. Very, very important. Um, there's something that Candace Craw Goldman wrote about that Dolores Cannon told her about a new energy, a heart based energy. that is, has not really been used much. It, like a new energy on the planet. Is that anything you can tell me about? There is a heart-based energy that you can use to power things, but most people would not know how to do that because in order for the energy to work, you have to be totally, you have to totally be very good at heart, have a lot of light in your heart, and you can actually give out energy to make things work. It also messes with your technology sometimes. It kind of makes your technology kind of sputter because it's giving it too much energy and sometimes it makes things go out or because of so much energy it makes things go crazy. It makes your electronics go kind of out of whack. That's the same thing as having that kind of energy. It has a lot of light in that energy. I think she, and it's real energy. I think she was talking about using it in groups. You can use it in groups because it's energy of... It's kind of hard to explain, but love energy is actually real energy. Like, it's energy energy. Like, it can also be used as electric energy. Like, it can make things light up. You can make a light bulb in your hand light up if you have enough love in your hand. Wow. You can hold a light bulb and then it'll light up. This, it'll light up because you have energy in your body and it'll mm -hmm. light up. So sometimes you can make a light bulb light up in your hand. So, so I know she said it could work in groups. And I know Candace found that ironic because she said it came in around 2020 mm -hmm. when we were being kept, you know, away from being in groups. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be in groups though? It works better in groups. Better in groups. Okay. When the 2020 thing came, that was a big turning point. When people were at home more, mm -hmm. it was almost exactly like it would be yeah. when the matrix breaks down or right. you have no power. or Because everyone, if no one is working and everyone has time to actually think, think yeah. and relax and listen to the quiet around them, and they're not around other people all the time. You do not have to be around each other all the time. You, you already link together in spirit. So mm -hmm. when everyone was at home, they didn't realize it, but they were linking to other people in spirit, and they had no idea. But that's why they all felt better, because after the 2020 thing and all of the mess was over, no one wanted to go back to work because they felt good being home right. with their oh, families yeah. and they didn't have to worry about getting up early in the morning to go to a job to survive. Everyone was pretty much surviving without having to do much. And it felt good. And they really hated having to go back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was awful to them. Yes. It was almost on a cusp of what you call a takeover when no one was going to go back to work. Actually, if everyone would have done that, then your life would be better because 
it will what force your so-called governments to think things in a different way to get people to do stuff. If no one would have went back to work, nothing would run, and the governments would have been forced to think of another way to keep things going. Did it was it, almost the same thing as the Matrix breaking down if they would have done that. Did it almost backfire in a way? In, in some ways? It was really close. Really close to backfiring because everyone on the whole planet was almost on the same wavelength. Right. Because they were No able one to wanted think. to go back to work anywhere. Yeah. And they did not like that. They probably didn't expect that to happen, I'm assuming. Yes. Wow. Wow. Gosh, okay. If it was almost everyone, then it would be different. But of course, there were some that were really so powerfully. There are some that are so much into the Matrix. There are some that didn't like that. That's true. They wanted to go to work. Yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> because they they want to feel like they're part of a group and feel useful. They didn't. There were a lot of people that did not, not like not having nothing to do because they felt like they weren't okay. worth anything because they weren't doing anything. Mm. Because they were tied, they tied their worth into their job. Yes. Okay. So, unfortunately, there were more people like that, and that's how it you came back to where you are now. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Interesting. It is going to get better. Well, it is already getting better. There are some things that the negative energy is still trying to do, but they are getting better at it. They are getting better, or the or the positive energy is getting better. Positive energies are getting better. Oh, a lot of people are telling me they're they're sick right now. They're throwing up. They're purging, and well, that's what it feels like to them. Is that what's happening? Yes, it is a purge, especially if it comes out of nowhere. Right. And it feels kind of like a flu or whatever. And they were just... Mm. And that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. It's getting all of the negative that builds up and it purges. Mm -hmm. If it builds up, it'll it'll just purge. Okay. And then they usually feel better after that. It seems like everyone's doing that, though. Even someone I have a session for tomorrow said that she threw up. Yes, everyone is... Everyone Let's is, yeah. especially if it just comes out of the blue and they don't have no idea why they're throwing up. And right. some people are throwing up; they don't even feel sick. Huh. And they're like, "Why am I throwing up?" And it's because you're approaching. Oh. Was well, is that why I have thing like my skin uh, is weird and? Um... Yes. Really, I, I didn't even think about that till just now, but excessive sweating and anything that has any kind of. Like the roughness? Fluids is coming out of your body. Coming out of your body. Is, is this roughness? Is that also uh, just stuff coming out or is that something else? Yes, it is. And you can use the aloe. Uh, the aloe and you can use a scrub brush. The scrub if you, brush. If, you, if, you, if you put aloe on a scrub brush and, oh. and send, it will, your skin will not be rough anymore. Oh, okay. That way you can get the yeah. roughness is is, is is dead skin on your... So you can scrub it off and your skin will be perfectly soft when you send it. Oh, okay. Like a scrub brush, kind of like the ones where you use when you do your dishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aloe is really amazing, isn't it? Yes. Does that also balance your hormones? Yes, aloe mm -hmm. balances a lot of things in your... Let's see, there's aloe to get rid of back pain... Best thing for back pain to get rid of. Ginger. Ginger. Um, tele tele I, I can't remember it is is some seasoning that you have called tel talcum tele Tal It starts with a T. I can't remember the name of it, but Let's see. Oh. It's it's the orange. Yes, uh, I know what you're talking about. Substance. I can't think about it. But you know what I'm talking about. But you it's said that Indian food. That yeah, that stuff yeah. and and ginger takes away back pain. Oh. Ginger actually takes away a lot of pain. You can eat a slice of ginger. We have some in the fridge. That's good. 
Yes, uh, this being's higher self told him to buy to it. it. Yeah. So he bought it. You can you can eat you can eat slices of ginger actually. It's, it's good for your stomach, isn't it? Yes. You can you can peel it and eat slices of it and it helps a lot. Yeah. I don't know why I can't think of that other thing. It's like in curries and things like that. Ginger. Yeah, ginger. <laughs> talcum powder. <laughs> Ta wait, talcum powder or or the, the stuff that we're talking about? The um oh brother. Turmeric. Those three things will help with back pain. Actually, those three things will help with any kind of pain. This turmeric and <laughs> talcum powder and ginger actually takes away pain. Wait, talcum powder? Yes. You put it on your skin? Yes, you do not eat it. Oh. Mix it with a little bit of water. Okay. But, you know, a lot of people wouldn't do that because you have to use... It would take a lot of that. If you've got enough money and you really want to... But that is that is the least. But wait, what does that do for your skin? It clears the skin. It clears the skin. You'd have to get like a, a taco powder that's free of scents or something. Yes, but that is the least of the things. Oh, okay. just just concentrate on the ginger and the other one, and that takes away. That is actually a natural pain remedy. So you could put that on your skin. And it will clear it. Yes. Okay. I think that's about it. The only other thing that I did recently was to fight the negative energy by fighting back with crystal and and speaking light language and bringing in the idea of segment, and that seemed to work. Yes, the crystals are. The crystals are working. Working. Okay. Okay. They might not feel it right now, but they they are working. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Uh, I think that's it. We probably should bring him back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank well, you. we really appreciate you speaking with us. We really appreciate you speaking with us. And everything when it comes to the light energy is okay. going to come. Is, everything is going to come. Everyone is going to be fine. Yeah. So, it is going to come. All right. Thank you, Uriel. We love you. I will retire. Yes. Thank you for listening to Quantum Healing with the Angels. This podcast is sponsored by Sarah Webb Beyond Quantum Healing. Contact Sarah today for your free consultation and mention this ad for 10% off your quantum healing or quantum connect session.